Okay, this is the solutions um, and explanation of the Brex. Then this is the part where there's four different things we like to combine my variables first, and I try to keep them going. You don't have to do it that way, um, but equal to twenty four. On to number two, um, this is a literal equation. Um, so we want to get the x by rid of that denominator, that w. So I'm going to multiply both sides by w. There's a couple different ways to look at that, but all those. So the important thing is the reason we multiply is because it cancels that denominator. So now we don't have the denominator and we don't have the w. Um, a couple people tried to distribute the w, um, and that's not right. We cancel it, that's the whole idea. And then 7 times W, whoops, I put W. W times 7 is 7W, or W7, doesn't matter which order. Um, again, we want to get the X by itself, so I'm going to subtract B. Now, again, remember, there's a couple different ways to write this. Um, I'm going to do 7W minus B. You could have done minus B plus 7W. It doesn't make any difference. But not least, I'm going to divide everything by 3. Again, personally, I divide it by 3 like that. So my answer is 7w over 3 minus b over 3. So remember, you could have done it as 7w minus b all over 3. And I don't remember. If it's multiple choice, it might be that second way. Um, I don't um, but make sure you know, I guess, be aware of both ways that first way. Number three. So what is another way to write negative four is less than x is less than eight? So so it's gonna be a little bit easier to follow. Um, but basically I want to make sure you know that it's Now, I don't remember that a lot of times with multiple choice, they start having x first. So this one over here has the same order. So x is the order. It's the order that sign has to switch. Um, because if negative 4 is smaller than x, that means x is bigger than negative 4. Um, so this is what I'm kind of thinking is going to be on the test. Number four, solve the inequality. Um, again, if you want to subtract 2x from both sides, you can. Just eventually you'll have to um, divide by a negative. So I personally like to add 6x, so that cancels. We get 8x plus 20 is less than negative 36. Then subtract 20 from both sides. I get 8x is less than, looks like negative 56. And last but not least, divide both sides by 8. I get x is less than negative 7. Doesn't tell you to graph, so you can leave it like that. Um, cross multiplication. One fraction is equal to one fraction. Now remember, when you do that, you need parentheses. So it's two multiplied by x plus four. Or by two x minus four. Now remember, the order doesn't matter because you have x plus four times two this way. You can do it that way. Um, I just don't like that because that's not how we're used to. We're used to having that number in front. And also, I should say, and multiplying those. You're multiplying those there. People miss that equal sign. They need three. And this is a mistake people make. They just put two x plus four. You have to make three multiply that four by two as well. Same thing over here. Three times two x is six x. You still have to take the three times the negative four. So don't have six x minus four. Now once you've done that, now it's solved. 
or, or less things you can do and still get the same answer. Add 12 to both sides. For X, add both sides by 4, and then X is equal to 5. Value. Now, the important thing is you have to get the absolute value by itself before you take your two equations. So, before you do the plus 17 and minus 17, I have to add 10. 3 times x plus 4 is equal to um, 17 plus 10 is 17 plus 10 is 27. distribute the three it will work for this problem but it doesn't always work so i and i also um to get rid of that three so you're multiplying you're dividing by three you, you're multiplying so hopefully you remember oh that's multiplying so you can divide to cancel that so we have x plus four is equal to 27 over three is nine now since now I now we can split it up into our two equations so x plus four is equal to positive nine x plus 4 is equal to negative 9. So subtract 4 from both sides over here. You get x is equal to 9 minus 4 is 5. Over here, you subtract 4 from both sides. x is equal to negative 9 minus 4. Use a calculator if you need to. should be negative 13. Now, again, I don't care how you put your answer, but make sure you don't put your answer as 5, negative 13. That's an ordered pair. That's not right. Uh, teachers that are sticklers where they say they want their answer notation, uh, where you have a brace, and then you have 5, negative 13, and a brace. That's great, and that's really good notation to let learn with, but I, I would avoid that if I were you, because if you make a mistake and put parentheses, then it's wrong. If you do it this way, it's right. But I've seen a lot of students, they start doing that and they accidentally put parentheses and I will have to count that wrong. So make sure you're being careful with that. Story problem. Rodney's going to the carnival. He has a total of, a total of $36 to spend. Costs $6 to get into the carnival and each game is $3. Right equation you would use to find how many games Rodney can play you can find to play how many games Rodney can play. The variable for this one, I will say what the variable is. And he um, wants to know how many games. So how many games on the same C is the number of and he has value that if it's a total of thirty-six dollars, that means everything adds up to be thirty-six. Any problem? Um, well, thirty-six. That means you add everything together. You add the amount that you um, the amount that you paid. Now, the amount you paid to get in the carnival does not matter whether you went to the carnival and played one game or 10 games. That doesn't change at all. So that's $6. So that gets it divided and multiplied by anything. It's $3. One game, it's $3. If you play two games, it's $6. If you play three games, it's 9 So you're multiplying three by the number of games you played. That is the equation we're looking for. It doesn't ask you to solve it. This is the right equation, so we can leave it like that. Now, again, obviously, there are options. 3G plus 6 is equal to 36 is a good one. Um, those are the best things. I will accept if you have something like um, 3G minus 36 is equal to 6 or something crazy like that. Anything that's equivalent to that, I can deal with. Um, but those are going to be the best ones that I recommend. Cases. That these are going to be special cases, so let's tribute that as we have 2x plus 5 is equal to 2x plus 10. Subtract your 2x from both sides. 
the red flag, so we don't have any variables left, we have five is equal to 10. That is not true, that's false. The next one's an inequality. X plus 12 than or X plus 12. Some people try to work. I would still I subtract 4X from both sides. So I have 12 is less than 12. This one's also false, no solution. 12 is not less than 12. 12 is equal to 12, but they don't have that one either. They have that little line like this. Now, all of a sudden, that would be true, but they don't have that line. Okay. Um, this one, first thing I'll do, I'll split it up. So that is 3 x, and um, I also would flip this to make it something that needs to do. That's what I'm looking for here, and I'm going to do that. For compound inequalities, the graph is where you really get your answers in this uh, to the right, I shade to the left. Now, since this is an or problem, you just put those on the same graph. So everything on your graph is shaded. So this is all real numbers. Also, I want to remind you that's a negative 12, uh, negative 2, not a minus 2. You don't add 2 to both sides, and that's one more. Establish, this is where you divide both sides by negative 2. I cancel. So write x plus 4 equals negative 6. That is no solution, because remember, you cannot have absolute value equal to a negative, because an absolute value is always positive. If your answer is always positive, it can never be a negative. Seven x to both sides. X plus x is equal. Twenty two, I believe. By three, so to get rid of that, apply. is equal to 12. X to both sides, that's 30. So we want to get this X all by itself. So I'm going to subtract on first. Personally, I'm going to make this W. You can be minus R plus W, that's fine. As long as you don't sound fine, do not do R minus W. That's wrong. My W is positive, it's got to stay positive. My R is minus or negative, it's got to stay negative. Now to get the X by itself, I divide by T. So again, you can either divide everything by T. So you're just going to do W over T minus R over T. Or you can put W minus R, the whole thing over T. doesn't make any difference. Um, so this one we're solving for W. Now, this is the one where I told you guys, I'm going to do a mini step first. Um, I'm going to do one step you don't have to do. Um, but I'm solving for this W. And so remember, with multiplication, the order doesn't matter. So I'm just going to change this to put my W at the end, 
Because that's kind of what we normally do. If we have like two variable I'm solving for is usually the end. Now, the reason I do that is because now I can treat that T and that M like one big variable, and I can divide the whole thing by TM, both sides. So keep divide the whole thing. So we have W is equal to D over TM. That's the easiest way to do that, in my opinion. Um, you could also do it in two steps. Erase this. Also divide both sides by T. So that's WM is equal to D over T. And then divide both sides by M. Since we're already dividing by T, that M goes with that T then. So W is equal to D over TM. Um, the thing that people miss is they say T over M, and that's wrong. If we divide it by T, then when you divide by anything else, you put that in the denominator with that T. So these next... Number is variables. Uh, so again, the first thing you can do is multiply this by the common multiple. So my least common multiple between the 12 and the I'm sorry, between the 3 and the 4 is 12. So I'm multiplying this whole thing by 12. I've said this before, but here's um, you don't have to do this, but I think it helps give you some space. So 12 times 2 over 3x uh, minus 12 times 5 is equal to 12 times 3 over 4x um, plus 12 times 2. Then my 12 and 3 division or divide. Then negative 12. 12 divided by 4 is 3, so we can cancel times 3x is 9x. 2 times 12 is 24. Make sure all the numbers that are fractions um, by that same 12. Um, a lot of people forget that. So now from here, we have some we can do. I subtract 8. Minus 8 is... 4, so I end up getting negative 84 equal to x. So this one, you actually value it all by yourself, so you can go ahead and split it up. So 4x minus 12 is equal to 40, and 4x minus 12 is equal to negative 40. Same type of thing. This is equal to x is equal to negative seven. Now the next one, number twenty. The first thing you separate it into equations. You have to get rid of both sides by two. So I have three x minus six is equal to fifteen. Now that the or make two equations. And 3x minus 6, negative 15. So from here, 3x is equal to 21. Plus six plus six. Nine. 
9 divided by 3. x is equal to negative 3x, not y. And then we have some of these. Now we're solving both of these. Or less than or equal to x minus 2. I like to prove that. I can do what works. Or equal to 8. I both sides by 2. X is less than or equal to 4. Big thing you have to remember that a lot of people forget. Problem because it's all squished together. There's two inequalities in one problem. That means it's and. Remember, if it's or, it'll say the word or for sure. If it doesn't say the word or, it's definitely an and. Negative two here and four here. Uh, two is shaded to the right, and four is shaded to the left. Right there in between. And again, that's how most of your and problems are. Not necessarily all of them, but a lot of them. An or problem, so again, you know it's or because it says the word or. At eight, two, divide by this negative. For the word or, so it's bigger than four, or x is smaller than two. So I have two and I have four. Two's filled in, four is open, two shades to the left, four shades to the right. The next one we have solve and graph these absolute value inequalities. Um, so remember, make sure you're careful. With this thing. Since the absolute value is all by itself, since it wasn't trusted, so we can't get the x is greater than 12. x minus 3 is negative 12. Now you have to flip your sign with that negative answer. And the other thing, and I always forget to do at the very beginning, uh, but since this is greater than, remember that means it's an or clause. Remember the land of gore. Land stands for less than, you use and. Gore stands for greater than, you use or. So this is going to be an or problem when we're done. You don't have to. You could work um, you work on your own and then graph it. And then look at your graph and decide if it's an and or an or. Um, but I kind of like it you know right away. So I can just check my work. This is greater than six. So this is or it's greater than six or less than negative two. My six. Open and since it's an or problem, I can't wait for the To do this or is a way to check your work. So if you look at what this graph actually looks like, the six shades to the right, two shades to the left. Um, so our graph is right on track with what we did earlier, but it's always a good way to double check that. 
problem because it's less than less than or equal to 10. And x plus 5 less than or equal to 10. Sorry, less uh, greater than or equal to negative. Sorry, I was distracted. You have to switch your sign and make it into a negative. The other one we solve, so subtract 5, I get x is less than or equal to positive 5. x is greater than or equal to negative 15. Whoops, thank you. And this is an and problem. So I'd like to add that in there. You need to add it somewhere. If you put it up here, that's fine. Or if you put it down here, you don't need it both. But I do need to put it somewhere. Um, and then again, if you trust the land of gore, since it's an and problem, it just shades in between. But it's always a good idea to check. Um, so, oh. I feel like I did something wrong here. Oh, yes, I did something wrong. So the only thing is fret, um, and people do this all the time, my 5 down here is bigger than negative 15. Reason, and again, that's a really good, okay, so I caught my mistake because I knew in the land of gore, this had to be an and problem, and so you shade in between. But if I look, this 5 is to the left, and this 15 is shading to the right, so that's not an and problem. So that's how I call my mistake. I knew something was wrong because my land of gore didn't jive with my graph. So I'm going to act like I did that on purpose. And the thing I missed, and it's just a silly mistake, negative 15 obviously is smaller than positive 5. Negatives are always smaller. So now when 15 shades to the uh, right and 5 shades to the left, now the overlap is in the middle, and now that makes way more sense with this and. Um, but I'd like to say I did that on purpose, but that is a very good reason why I like the land of gore, because I like to just double check that stuff. Pete is going to order burgers tonight. The basic burger is eight dollars. Um, every additional topping is three dollars each. Total bill is equal to the number of the coin for the test. Doesn't ask ask for the equation, but it's not a bad idea to put it. Um, so the basic burger is $8. That doesn't matter. Again, I always ask myself, that doesn't matter how many toppings are on it. If you put 10 toppings on it, that doesn't matter. The basic burger, plain, is $8. $3. If you put 10 toppings on it, that's $30. If you put one extra topping, it's $3. So it's 3 multiplied by however many toppings you put on it. Obviously, add it together to be your... Spend a total of $17. And then now we just solve this like normal, subtract 8. 3t is equal to 17 minus 8 is 9. 3 divided by 3, t is equal to 3, so he has three different toppings on his burger. But obviously, if you have any questions, you can definitely let me know. Um, also, we do our review day where we just do questions and answers. Again, if you have questions, you can obviously ask those then too.